Whoa, that was so crazy. <laughs> People often associate the idea of investing in the stock market with the idea of risk, but there are plenty of risky things in life. Like, well, what you just uh, witnessed. You're here to learn how to properly assess your risk before investing in the stock market. But what does risk actually mean? Personally, I like to think of risk in two distinct ways, general risk and specific risk. General risk is risk that you can't avoid, but specific risk you can do things to mitigate against. For instance, this weekend we've been out hiking and snowshoeing with some friends which has involved us hiking around in the cold weather. We've even broken down some large dead trees to use to build a fire and the temperature has been over minus 20 below. These are all specific risks. But by making sure that we're safe when we're doing these things, that we're breaking down trees properly, that we're lighting fires safely, we can mitigate against these types of specific risks. But we can't avoid the general risk, which is just being outside in general. Every time you leave your house, you're accepting some level of general risk for just being out in the world. But what about something like this? Well, I would say that's much more of a high stakes risk. Yes, you do potentially get the reward of people saying sick gainer, bro. But other than that, you're risking your body completely. So how do we apply this logic of risk control to investing in the stock market? If you've seen my video so far, then you've seen me present a few different portfolios made up of index funds that invest in stocks and bonds to provide a desired level of risk and return. This would be a calculated risk because you have a reasonable idea idea of what you're getting yourself into. That's because the level of stocks and bonds in your portfolio will roughly determine the level of risk that you're going to be taking on. But you might be wondering what is the right level of risk for you? Well, today I'd like to introduce you to three criteria that you can use to evaluate what level of risk is most appropriate for you to take on in the stock market. This is the same criteria that I use to assess that I should be investing in 100% stocks right now. First, let's determine your ability to take risk. And the two factors that determine this are your time horizon of your investment and your stability of income. If you watch my beginner's guide to investing, then you'll remember that time horizon basically just means how long you'll have your money invested for. The farther your time horizon goes out, or in other words, the longer that you'll have that money invested, the more risk you can responsibly take on for that investment. Larry Swedrow, the author of The Right financial plan provides these guidelines for assessing your risk based on your time horizon. So you can see as the timeline gets longer, it's a good idea to incorporate more stocks into your portfolio. And this increases the level of risk of your portfolio, but it also increases the level of return that you can expect. If your timeline is over 20 years, like mine is, then it can make sense for you to be invested in 100% stocks. The reason for this is statistically, the farther you go out in time, the higher chance that you're going to have a positive return on your investment. So you can take on more risk because the statistics are in your favor. Let's say for example that you invested your money for five years, but you put it into 100% stocks. But what happens if the market crashes in year four of that five year investment? You could maybe lose half your money in that case. And then when year five rolls around, you're gonna be screwed. But if that same market crash happened in year four of a 30 year investment, you still have 26 more years for your money to A, recover from that crash and B, to continue to grow. Over 30 years, you're honestly probably going to see several market crashes or at least dips. But the farther you go out, the increased 
likelihood that not only are you going to be able to survive those, but you're going to continue to grow past them. If we think about what happened in 2008, that seemed like a huge deal at the time. But for anybody who has invested for the long term and is still invested, not only did they recover all the losses since then, assuming that they're holding a globally diversified mix of stocks and possibly bonds, they would have not only had their portfolio fully recover from that drop, but they would also have earned quite a bit of money since then. But another thing to keep in mind when assessing your ability to take on risk is figuring out how stable your income is. If you have a cushy, comfortable job that's very stable, then you can responsibly take on more risk because you know that there's not a likelihood of your income going away. But for somebody who's freelancing or doing gigs and their income is kind of sporadic and all over the place and uncertain, then it probably doesn't make as much sense to take on as much risk as somebody whose income is much more stable. So use these two factors of time horizon and stability of income to assess your ability to take on risk. The next criteria is your willingness to take on risk. While in the previous discussion, you might have assessed that you're able to take on risk, you also have to ask yourself if you're willing to take on risk. And that's because we're human. Emotions sometimes come into play and unfortunately can override our judgment and cause us to make mistakes. Just like our friend was willing to do that gainer off of the cliff, you also need to assess if you're willing to take on risk investing your money. And probably the easiest way to do this is by asking yourself, what's the largest drop that you'd be willing to take in your portfolio in order for you to stay invested. And here's Larry's guidelines for that. Now remember, you may think that you can take on a huge drop and that you'll be okay and be able to sleep at night, but until you've actually experienced one, you can't really be sure. The last thing you want to be doing is panic selling at the bottom of a down market. And that means that you just get really scared, you think that the market's going to zero and you sell all your investments. But really what you've done is you've sold them at the bottom of the market when it goes on to recover and you're going to have to buy back in at a higher price later, thus losing you a whole bunch of money. Me personally, I'm willing to take on large drops in my portfolio because I know I have a long time horizon and I'm confident that a diversified mix of stocks and bonds is going to succeed over the long term. Also, before I was more educated on investing, I used to do crazy things like trade derivatives like options and I took some pretty big losses back in the day so I'm pretty comfortable with them now. Don't play around with options kids. But yeah I kind of baptized myself in the fires of high risk investments in my past so I'm pretty comfortable with unrealized losses now. And that's the only way you'll know for sure is when you actually take them and you'll see how you react. So keep that in mind when you're assessing your willingness to take on risk. Now let's talk about the need to take on risk. Let's say I have a financial goal to have $1 million by the time I'm 50 years old. And let's also say that today I have $200,000 that I can invest. So this means that I would need to earn 7% over the next 24 years to hit my goal. So in this situation, I would need to take on whatever level of risk is going to allow me to earn 7% on my investment for the next 24 years. To do this, I'd probably have to have a portfolio that's made up of a good chunk of stocks, maybe 70% or more. There's no way to know for sure, but there's definitely going to have to be a good portion of stocks in there. But what if I was already 50 and I had 10 million dollars. Should I still be investing my money in a high percentage of stocks? I mean, depending on your lifestyle, of course, you probably don't want to be putting your money into a high percentage of stocks if you're trying to preserve your wealth. With that kind of wealth at 50 years old, you don't need to take on risk. I mean, just earning 3% on that investment would give you $300,000 per year to live on. So it's important to understand what level of return that you need to achieve your financial goals and that you compare your level of return you need with the level of risk that that will correspond with. So after going through those three criteria for yourself, the ability to take on risk, the willingness to take on risk, and the need to take on risk, you should have a pretty good idea of what level of risk is appropriate for you in the stock market. And this level of risk directly translates to the percentage of stock
stocks and bonds that you should have in your portfolio, which makes this video a great prerequisite to one of the next videos that I'm gonna be making where I'm going to be talking about something called asset allocation. And asset allocation is basically just how to construct a portfolio that's made up of a certain percentage of stocks and a certain percentage of bonds and how that all works together to provide you with what you need. I'd also like to make a video about the relationship between risk and reward because I think it's an extremely, extremely important idea to understand and I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it, especially when it comes to investing. But in the meantime, don't be diving under cars or going cliff jumping. You do, however, have my permission to walk on frozen lakes that are at least four inches thick of frozen ice. Assess that risk, people. Thank you.